We're going to take a look at the rules of exponents and you would probably be wise to make yourself an organized sheet that summarizes these rules so you can look at them all at once for practice. Product. When we're multiplying, you simply follow these two bullet points. Multiply the coefficients and add the exponents. So you can see these examples. I'll walk you through one. I've got two coefficients, 3 and 2. I multiply the coefficients to get 6. I've got an exponent of 5 and an exponent of 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. So you have to multiply your coefficients and add your exponents. You'll see that the same thing is happening on these two. In this case, I have an ex or a coefficient of 1. And here I have a coefficient of 1. And you see that it works even with your negative exponents. So we move along to quotient or division. You've got two bullet points if you're going to make a sheet that summarizes the rules. These are the rules for the quotient or dividing. Subtract your exponents and divide or reduce your coefficients. You'll see that there's similarities here. So let's see, I've got five different examples for you. Let's walk you through this one and you can look at the others. It says, if I'm dividing, subtract my exponents. A 4 and a 3 leaves me with an exponent of 1. Divide or reduce your coefficients. Well, 12 divided by 10 doesn't work out perfectly, but I can reduce it just like a good old fraction back in the day. 2 divides into both of those evenly, so this becomes a 6 fifths. Now let me show you something about the subtract the exponents thing. I'm going to look at this problem right here. The 20 and the 15, they're, they're coefficients, so we're going to reduce those because they don't divide evenly. 5 divides into each for 4 thirds. But let's look at the exponents. When I divide exponents, I must subtract. So 2 minus 9 gives me negative 7, or x to the negative 7. When you do your subtracting of the exponents, your answer is always going to go on top. You're going to learn a rule later that says if I have a negative exponent, I'm allowed to put that in the denominator as a positive exponent, and that's fine. But an alternative method that some people do is this. They say, I have an exponent of 2 and an exponent of 9. The 9 is stronger or larger than the 2 by 7. So I will keep the 7 as my new exponent, and because the stronger 9 was in the denominator, the result is a 7 in the denominator. So that last method I showed you, you may or may not like it, so you don't have to use it. You can always subtract exponents. Remember that if you subtract 2 minus 9 is negative 7, your result is always going to go in the numerator first, although you may do some extra steps with it later. Okay, the third rule we're going to look at is a power situation, or in other words, we're going to raise an exponent to another exponent. If you're making a summary sheet for yourself, then these are the two bullet points that apply to this situation. When I have an exponent raised to another exponent, I'll multiply the exponents and I'll raise the coefficient to that power. So I'm going to use this example to walk through, and you can see the others. Power to a power situation. So I'm going to multiply exponents. 4 times 2, x to the 8th. Raise the coefficient to the power. So what that's really saying is we had a coefficient 5 and an exponent of 2. So I'm thinking about raising the coefficient to the power. 5 squared is 25. Same thing is happening here and here. In the upper one, I have a coefficient of 1. In this bottom one, the power applies to both the numerator and the denominator and the coefficients, and the power applies to the exponent in the top and the exponent in the bottom. So here are your first three sets of rules for multiplying, dividing, and raising a power to a power, but there's more. This one is short and sweet. Anytime you have an exponent of 0, the answer is 1. x to the 0, 1. 
7x to the 0 power, 1. Gobbledygook to the 0 power, 1. Pop-Tart to the 0 power, 1. Now that's a math rule we can get behind. Here's a rule I referred to a little bit earlier in the video, and it involves negative exponents. And this rule is pretty simple. Anytime I have a negative exponent, I will just move it to the other part of the fraction to make it a positive exponent. For example, here's a negative exponent, and this is in a numerator. You don't see it as a numerator, but if you put a 1 there, now you know it's in a numerator, and you can always do that. So I move it to the denominator and call it positive, and that's it. I don't do anything else. That 5 does not have anything to do with the x to the negative 3 in this case. I just move the problem part. That'll become more evident here. We've got a lot going on, but there's only one part that has a negative exponent, and that's the y to the negative 4. So we'll get to that in a second. 14 over 2 reduces to a 7. x to the second over x to the 1. The rule says when you divide, you subtract exponents, so 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 w in the top and 1 w in the bottom cancel perfectly. So really, we've taken care of everything, but we've purposely ignored the y to the negative 4. But then the rule is, if I have a negative exponent, I move it to the other part. It was in the numerator, so I move it to the denominator and call it positive. Look at this one down here. 3 fourths can't reduce, so I keep it 3 fourths. x has nothing to reduce with, y has nothing to reduce with, and they're both positive exponents, so we just leave it alone. Here's a w to the negative 8, and it says if I have a negative exponent, I simply move it to the other part of the fraction and call it positive. A negative exponent goes to the numerator as a positive exponent. Kaboom, I'm done. One last example, I forgot to highlight this one, but take a look at this. To revisit some old rules, four times two is eight. When I'm multiplying, I add exponents. So three plus negative four is negative one. Eight x to the negative one, I can now say, hey, I have a negative exponent. I can move that to the denominator and make it a positive exponent and you don't usually bother writing the exponent of 1. I'm going to end by showing you a couple of ways these could show up. Here you have a rectangle, and back in the elementary school days, we would say, what's the area of the rectangle? Base times height, or length times width, or however you want to state it, but it's 4 times 8. Well, here's a rectangle, and now your two sides that you're going to multiply together are a lot more complicated but you simply say side times side, and now you, in this case, follow your rules for multiplication. Multiply your coefficients, add your exponents, x to the first, x to the first, they add to x to the second, and this y exponent and this y exponent add to eight. So same thing you used to be doing, updated to more complicated versions. And we'll end on this cube example. Sometime in middle school, you learn that the volume of a cube is side cubed. So 5 cubed, or 5 times 5 times 5. So if I was going to say volume equals side cubed, but my side was more complicated, now that I know exponent rules, no big deal. Here's the length of a side cubed, and the rules for power to a power is the power applies to the coefficient, 2 to the third power is 8. You're tempted to write 6, but that's wrong. And exponent to an exponent, we multiply exponents, so 4 times 3 is 12. There's a lot of rules, which is why I was encouraging you to summarize them on your own on a blank sheet of paper so that you just have one sheet of paper to look at.